Today on our Ambassador Series, I'm joined by Jeremy Brewer, Australia's High Commissioner to Vanuatu. Hi Commissioner, thank you for your time. Thank you, David. What is the nature of Australia's relationship with Vanuatu? Well, Australia and Vanuatu enjoy a very close, broad and deep relationship which covers a whole lot of areas. We've uh, had uh, good engagement with Vanuatu since well before independence. That happened in 1980 and it's grown and developed into what's now a strong and enduring relationship, a relationship of friends, I suppose a relationship of neighbours and certainly I hope a relationship of partners. We uh, work together on a range of different things and uh, we have a lot of people-to-people -people engagement. There's many Australian tourists there. We're uh, the largest aid donor to Vanuatu and um, we're also one of the major investors and trade partners of Vanuatu. So there's engagements at all kinds of different levels. In which sectors is Australia providing development assistance? Well, we have a pretty large uh, program in Vanuatu. Uh, the total amount is around about $60 million just over, in fact, $60 million for the year 2013-14, and I expect it'll be uh, similar for the new financial year. Um, we engage across a few major sectors, health, education, infrastructure. We do some work in economic governance, and we have programs in the law and justice uh, area as well, which encompasses assistance to the police force there. And how have you seen uh, the, the situation in Vanuatu improve? Well, um, we've had uh, some real successes, I think, in our aid program. It's always a challenging thing to deliver a complex aid program. But we've, for example, in the last few years, since about 2007, we've seen an 80% reduction in the incidence of malaria. And I think anyone would regard that as a success. And uh, while we're not completely clear of malaria in Vanuatu, we're, we're very... Uh, close to it, I think it's fair to say. Um, we've had some excellent outcomes from our uh, uh, technical, vocational and educational and training uh, TVET sector program, which has created uh, a large number of people with job-ready qualifications or people who can start up their own businesses. That's resulted in significant increases to incomes to individual people. Um, and we've seen our education uh, assistance enable a larger number, a great a significantly larger number of people being able to afford to send their children to school. Could you tell me about Australia's seasonal worker program? Uh, the seasonal worker program is something that was introduced a few years ago as a pilot program. It's in, uh, now a permanent program of the Australian government. Uh, it's been supported by successive Australian governments. Um, Vanuatu and a number of other Pacific Island countries are participating in it and Vanuatu is the second largest supplier of labour through that program. It enables employers in Australia to access um, labour to work on uh, in various sectors, primarily horticulture but uh, now we're introducing new ones like agri uh, sorry, accommodation and aquaculture uh, where people instead of having to rely on backpackers and people who might leave after a very short amount of time can now be sure that they'll have access to reliable labour for up to six months. Um, it's a very beneficial obviously to those employers and to the Australian economy because it helps those sectors to drive forward but it's a particularly beneficial to the participants. Um, they earn Australian wages, they can have opportunities to develop, to develop skills and experience which increase their employability later uh, and they also are able to um, send significant amounts of money back to their communities in Vanuatu. Uh, typically, uh, according to some studies that we've done, about $6,000 Australian will go back per six month engagement per worker. Um, they invested in things like their children's education. Some have invested it in starting up businesses. Um, others have invested it into various community benefiting activities. So it's really a win, win, win situation all over. When Tropical Cyclone Lucy hit Vanuatu in March 2014, how did Australia assist Vanuatu? Tropical uh, Cyclone Lucy was uh, uh, particularly devastating because of not so much the high winds that it generated but the enormous amount of rainfall and it travelled quite slowly across Vanuatu leaving uh, some serious damage in its wake, particularly in certain localised areas. I think over 20,000 people were affected uh, at for, for a time uh, in five of Vanuatu's six provinces. Something like uh, 10 people died. Uh, again, in very, some of these effects were quite localised. Uh, but that was the situation that we had to respond to. Um, 
we worked very closely with our FRANS partners, as we called them, that's France and New Zealand, uh, to help coordinate our response. Australia provided uh, an aerial surveillance mission that was able to s um, surveil the whole country to assess the areas and identify the areas of most particular damage. Uh, we uh, provided through um, forward located uh, stocks of emergency supplies um, uh, a whole range of different things that they needed to, to help themselves um, rebuild and survive through the emergency, all kinds of um, emergency supplies. And uh, we also provide um, an ongoing person from the uh, Australian um, Civilian Corps. Uh, he's a specialist in disaster recovery and he works with the National Disaster Management Office there in Port Vila to help uh, improve their readiness for and their capacity to respond to disasters of this nature. And in the case of Cyclone Lucy, we also deployed another uh, Australian Civilian Corps volunteer who helped uh, in the uh, logistical coordination of the whole recovery effort. So we kept very busy and uh, we think that the um, response by the uh, disaster authorities in Vanuatu was quite well handled too. So we were very lucky to be able to work with a quite a competent partner. There are vast numbers of Australians who travel to Vanuatu each year. Could you touch on the people to people links between Australia and Vanuatu and perhaps any travel advice that's relevant for Australians going there? Sure. Well, I mean, Vanuatu is a beautiful country and a great place for visits, visit, uh, tourists, for families, individuals to visit. It has lots of natural beauty and lots of things that would attract people to come and visit it. Um, and a lot of Australians do, uh, something like 250,000 last year we think. Uh, and they come by plane but increasingly they come on cruise ships. Um, Australia is I think the fastest growing cruise ship market in the world and so that has potentially a very positive impact on, on the Vanuatu and on its economy. Um, there are going to be we think about 170 cruise ship visits to Port Vila this year which means virtually one every two days and those ships would carry 2,000 or so people on them on average I guess uh, and that, that means that there's potentially 2,000 people coming into the town purchasing food, purchasing um, items, purchasing um, uh, handicrafts and artworks and what have you so and buying tickets to participate in activities, taxi fares, you know all of those things that generate jobs that generate income. Um, we have um, been able to uh, uh, help Vanuatu uh, to potentially to develop its uh, the way in which it benefits from those uh, tourists more substantially. We've got a, an MOU with Carnival Australia, the uh, largest cruise liner operator in the world, uh, which is uh, designed to help provide um, training to. Uh, near Vanuatu so that they can be recruited to work on these cruise ships. Um, we uh, are working to help them develop some accreditation um, mechanisms for their handicrafts, for their artwork, for other produce like coffee for example, which uh, is grown in Vanuatu, to be purchased and sent back to Australia so that they can satisfy Australian quarantine requirements. Uh, and with, um, with Carnival we're currently supporting uh, an investigation into the economic benefits of cruise ship tourism so that we can understand what those benefits are, how extensive they are through the economy and therefore uh, develop methods, mechanisms, strategies to, to try and uh, I suppose increase the beneficial impact of that tourism. So there's quite a bit going on uh, and much more yet to be done uh, in the TVET sector that technical vocational education and training sector we've also um, had a, a very active program in which we have uh, provided people with skills and, and, and uh, capabilities to get skills that, that will enable them to be employed or, uh, and to uh, start businesses in the region and that's uh, in the industry I should say and that's worked very well too. Um, through the TVET uh, sector program we are able to uh, establish these what we're calling the TVET centres and they're, they're really um, uh, hubs for small tourism operators in Vanuatu that would otherwise have no real way of connecting with the outside world to be known about, to be contacted and to arrange bookings 
from people anywhere in the world through going through these hubs, these TVET centres, and that's proven to be very successful as well. So there's a whole range of areas where we're trying to promote and help Vanuatu to grow and benefit from its tourism, um, tourism industry. The uh, question about Australians in Vanuatu is a good one too. As I say, I think about 250,000 Australians visited Vanuatu last year. Um, and we think probably about 3,000 are permanently resident there as expatriates. Um, I guess in terms of our advice to them, Vanuatu is uh, a very high risk country for natural disasters. We have uh, volcanoes, uh, earthquakes, tsunamis, cyclones, floods, all of those things. That's just about every kind of disaster you can imagine is potentially uh, going to occur at Vanuatu at some point or another. And uh, if the Australian government is able to uh, contact you to help you out, to provide you with advice in the event that one of those uh, disasters occurred, it's best that we know how to do that. And we can know how to do that if you register on the Smart Traveller gov.au website uh, so that um, we have contact details for you and know that you're in the country for a particular period of time. So I would urge all Australians to do that and I would urge all uh, Australians to read our travel advice for Vanuatu before they travel so that they understand the kinds of, uh, the kinds of issues that they face in that country, which is otherwise a very safe and beautiful country to visit, I assure you. Hi Commissioner, thank you for your time today. A pleasure David and we look forward to your visit to Vanuatu. Thank you.